With the pandemic of antibiotic resistant infections, we're in sore need of a different way to prevent and treat infections than using the antibiotics which are creating the resistant bacteria in the first place. Yeah, it's silly. It's, we've, we've known about this for decades and we haven't paid attention to it because frankly, as a physician, I'm more interested in treating my patient than worrying about what's going to happen 10 years from now. And now we're paying for that price. Well, 2 billion people carry staph infections, and out of those, 53 million have the MRSA. That's the methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. With $4 billion per year spent on hospitalizations with the MRSA. So tell us about this exciting new study about the blue light phototherapy and in, in your experience with it. Yeah, medicine is really changing, Vicki. Uh, we're moving into a whole area of biophysics now where biochemistry is not the primary thing. Every reaction that occurs in the body, there's an exchange of photons, of light particles uh, in that reaction where they're absorbing light and they're also putting out light. And what we found in the last about 20 years is that there's a whole field here that's really rapidly evolving. And I've been involved with it myself, as you know, using something called a photon stimulator for that period of time, and I'm also involved in the research of using this at the University of California in San Francisco. Well, I remember you told me to use it on my horse. He had, has, uh -huh. has like this chronic uh, sore on his side, and, uh -huh. and it does help when I use that. And it helps his back, too, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, with pain. Well, well, oh, well, yeah, for the pain, for sure. Right. Is that. Yeah, I so, always have to do that before I ride him because he has osteoarthritis in his back. Right, well, a 30-year-old horse, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, but anyway, it's good for bed sores and... Oh, rashes it, it's, it has a wide range of uses that, that have to do with healing tissues. It increases circulation. It reduces inflammation. And this all happens in seconds. It also relieves pain. It, it's a, a remarkable way of treating these conditions in a short period of time, making changes that often are lasting. Well, tell us about the example of your patient that you were using the photon stimulator with, and then you got the other light back with the blue light. All right, what we're, Vicky's talking about is I had a patient who had a, a cellulitis on his foot that was pretty severe. And usually I use infrared light therapy because it seems to heal tissues quite a bit faster. And we were using it, and he was getting a little bit better, but normally I use a, a, a lot, photon stimulator that has both blue light and has infrared light, but this one was off. Uh, getting fixed, and so I was only stuck with the infrared light. Well, what happened, as soon as the blue light came back, I used it, and within a couple of days, it healed. Then all this research came out that was talking about how you can use blue light as something that's antibacterial. In, in fact, it kills microbes. Uh, it kills the methicil all methicillin-resistant staph that I know of, plus a wide range of other microbes. The problem with it is it doesn't go deep into tissues like the infrared. Infrared will go in as much as 10 inches. The blue light probably goes in a few millimeters, but when you're talking about wound infections, <coughs> Vicki, that's a different story because that's on the surface of the skin. So for post-operative uh, infections and for cellulitis and for ulcers of different kinds on the skin, this is an amazing technology. Well, there's some other phototype uh, therapies that are also good for this, like the uh, photodynamic therapy and photooxidation. Maybe you can touch on that. Right. Well, photooxidation is a process we use in the pre-antibiotic era. So that's back in the 40s. And what we would do is we would put a, ca a catheter into a vein, draw the let blood come out and go into a coil, and then that coil would lead back into the vein so that we had a little circuit of blood going into a coil and back into a person. And when you irradiate with ultraviolet light, uh, these people with about 150 cc's of blood, people who are close to moribund with peritonitis and other kinds of severe infections were recovering. There's one case uh, report, uh, actually it's a consecutive uh, number of cases, 250 consecutive cases of people with peritonitis that were treated only with infrared light, or I mean with the uh, photooxidation approach with UV light, and the vast majority of them recovered, which even today would be a stunning thing. But when antibiotics came out, this technology was lost. Okay, so what about the photodynamic therapy where they use the photosensitizer? Right, this is another approach that's really kind of interesting and it's used in the treatment of cancer now in an experimental way, but also used to treat people who have infections. For example, the dentists are now using it today for root canals and people who have infections around tooth implants. And what they do is inject a sensitizer like a chemical called methylene blue by injecting that into the area of the tissue 
and then shining an, a, a red light in the visible spectrum, the form of a laser into it, and it activates the methylene blue molecules to create a lot of free radicals that kill all the microbes that are down there, or in the case of cancer, will kill a lot of cancer cells. So a really exciting new technology that we have to look forward to uh, in practicing medicine. So where does the hyperbaric oxygen chamber fit in? Yeah, a hyperbaric oxygen is, is a great thought because it applies, what it is basically, is instead of 21% oxygen, which is in room air, we give 100% oxygen and then compress it so there are two or three atmospheres of pressure. That delivers more oxygen to the tissues, and when it does that, it, it enables the body to make more energy in areas where normally there's not enough oxygen to do that, and people tend to heal faster. But in the case of MRSA infections, it works fairly well, but we're in sore need of something more powerful. So what about IV vitamin C? I know that that's been used in the past for uh, infections. Yeah, now we're talking about something that does not have a lot of data behind it, but there's a fair amount of experience amongst practitioners who are doing what's called orthomolecular or nutritional medicine. And in that case, the IV vitamin C seems to do a lot of things that makes uh, tissues uh, repair better. <laughs> it basically uh, neutralizes a lot of the free radicals that cause inflammation, and in the process of doing that, allows the body to have a chance to catch its breath and do more in the way of defending itself. Well, there's also antibacterial clays, so let's talk about that. Right. Antibacterial clays have been used for thousands of years, and they work pretty well if they're done properly. These clays are very porous, and they tend to uh, absorb uh, different kinds of substances that they're immersed in. So, for example, if you had something that had copper or zinc or cobalt. Well, especially it, the copper. Iron. We've talked about that before, how effective that is in, it is in killing microbes. It is. In fact, that's one of the things I'll, we'll, we'll get to in just a minute. <laughs> but with, with clays, when you absorb these uh, metals into them, they have a, the ability to kill, uh, just like the blue light does, but it's, uh, it's not quite as powerful, but it's still something that, that you, can, uh, you can do, and some doctors are doing that. If you want to learn more about it, go to drsabuta.com, put clay in the search box, and up will come a video that we did on clay. Well, I think that we're in <clears throat> dire need of something besides um, these antibacterial soaps and antibacterial hand wipes and so forth, mm -hmm. because those are creating resistant bacteria also. Well, and they're not getting the job done either, because we're at a place where about 5% of people who come into the hospital without mm -hmm. an infection are leaving the hospital with an infection. And, and a lot of those infections are lethal. There are about 20,000 deaths every year from MRSA and another 80,000 from other infections that don't respond to antibiotics. There's about 100,000 deaths a year from this problem. We haven't solved it. We're also getting it from, from livestock. Well, livestock in the community is, is a source of methicillin resistant staph for sure because we're using literally tons of antibiotics on our cattle. And that's the best way I know of to make resistant organisms because the organisms are very clever. What they do is they, they find a way to adapt to the poisons, the antibiotics, the, that we use in trying to keep them from having other infections. Well, anyway, I think that the answer is to use this blue light in the hospitals mm -hmm. and also the copper. We did another whole show on the effects the of copper. copper. So if they could put that around on different surfaces and then have the blue light available, that maybe we could cut difference. down on these infections that are resistant to antibiotics. We can go back to what was done back in the 40s and 50s and 60s when in surgical suites they used ultraviolet light to sterilize things when the surgeons weren't there. It was overnight, that's what would happen. And it was effective, but in the antibiotic era, we got overconfident and started relying on the antibiotics. But now we can't do that anymore. So... Light therapy, biophysics, quantum mechanics is a whole new field of medicine, and it's, it's going to have to evolve into using that as a, another adjunct or the mainstream approach to treating people who have these infections and many other uh, kinds of, of health problems. So stay tuned. You're going to hear a lot more about light therapy.